Oh, and I'm here to show you the router advertisement attack, which is here, sandspice.info. Uh, this is a very dangerous attack, in my opinion, although Microsoft does not appear to agree, and they've said they are not going to patch it at all. It is not new. It's been known for about nine months, but there's, it's not patched. And um, I've got the details here, but basically what it does is it sends out router advertisements to the targets, and if they are running IP version 6, they have to make up IP addresses to join those networks. And that process uses up too much CPU. So to show it to you, I've got the Backtrack for Linux attacker here, which is going to run the attack. This is a Windows Server 2008 64-bit virtual machine, and this is a Windows 7 32-bit uh, virtual machine, and they both started up, connected to the network, and as you can see, the CPU is near zero, because they're not doing anything right now. But if I run this attack, I'm going to run it just a second and stop it. We're going to see if I can avoid killing the machines dead. There, I only got two dots brought, just 200 packets. Now both these machines go up to 100% CPU. Um, now, since I only sent 200 packets, this is not going to completely crash the machines. It is going to be possible to recover them by disconnecting them from the network briefly. Um, let me try that. If I disable this network card, then the CPU will recover eventually. And I can do the same thing for the server here. Network and sharing center. And it's a little slow and painful. Um, next network connection. There's the connection. I disabled the connection. And this worked. Because that connection is disabled, see this is how this is the point. I sent 200 router advertisements. That was enough to occupy the CPU for about eight seconds at 100 percent there. So, if you send more of them, you kill everything. And that's what I'm going to show you. So this one here has now also recovered. It was about the same. Looks like about six or eight seconds at 100% is what it needed. Of course, you didn't finish processing 200 at all. In my tests, you only need five per second to send the CPU to 100%. It just gave up on most of them because I canceled the uh, I disabled the NIP. So that made it stop attempting to join all those networks. All right, okay, let me get these back so you can see them. And I'm just going to let the attack run for a good amount of time, like a minute, and you'll see what it does. And we've got a couple more machines here. We've got a Windows XP Service Pack 3 and a Windows 7, um, which I'm pretty sure is fully updated. I know these virtual machines are fully updated. Over there are physical machines connected to the same network with wired Ethernet. So these machines are recovered, back to 0% CPU. And if I run it again, and just let it go. They go up to 100% within seconds, and if you let it go for a while, they will never come back. And let's see what happens to these different machines over here. Um, this one here is the Windows 7 machine, and it's the same story. It's up at 100%, and it's just going to stay there. This XP machine is okay, because XP by default does not implement IP version 6. If you go to the network properties here, it's not there. You can add it in, but it's not there by default, and this attack is entirely dependent upon the IP version 6 in its default behavior. So what I wanted to show you is, well, the mouse is still moving. Ah. This one is surviving much better than usual. I might be able to actually recover this hardware machine here. The recovery is to disable the network card, but when I right-click on that, nothing happens. That's kind of what I thought before the start button would work, but if I tried to shut it down, well, let me do this. I might be able to do that. Um, let's see what happens if I just pull out the physical wire. All right, that should tell it to quit joining all those networks. Now, let's see what we've got here, IP config. Yeah, when it is this slow, that means it's got all those addresses in there. Um, and we might see something come out here. The CPU is still at 
It's interesting to me, this machine survived moderately well. I'm still able to move the mouse, still able to move windows. This is unplugged. I have not been able to disable it though, and the CPU is still at 100%. Um, there. I get a response here a little bit. What is this about a Java update? Yeah, let's turn that off. Well, still at 100%. This machine is not completely dead, but it's pretty close to completely dead. There. And what it showed is everything is disconnected. Now, if you do this after a very brief attack, you'll just see hundreds of extra IP addresses. But now I turned it off completely, so I would like Microsoft to tell us what is going on here. The attack has stopped, the cable is disconnected, there are no IP version 6 addresses, and yet it has a giant backlog of work to do. And in other tests, it will be four hours before the server comes back. So I do not know what it's doing, but whatever it's doing, it should give that up. <laughs> they should patch it. Anyway, uh, over here, I think that's as far as you can go. Here is an entertaining fact. This also kills the Macintosh host, where it kills VMware. This has been happening every time I run a long attack. And I've got to research this. I think VMware can't handle it either. But anyway, um, if you had a Linux system directly on the machine, you can certainly run this attack as long as you want. And this means any one person on your network that runs this or that uh, gets a piece of malware that has this property could kill every machine on your network. And I think Microsoft has to test it. Uh, as far as I know, there's no one exploiting this in the wild, but it's only a matter of time. It's been known for almost a whole year now. That's it.